Hey guys, what's up? Thank you for joining me. Uh, today we're going to be talking about this, which is a car simulator. You've probably seen previously me driving on it and you kind of get the idea of what it's all about, but this is fairly new to me and I would like to give you like a rundown of what I did and how I built this because I did build this from scratch. I knew nothing about it two months ago um, and I started kind of doing some research and finding people that know about it and talking to them and you know accumulating parts because a lot of stuff is really popular now that everybody has stopped actually going out and racing and a lot of the pro drivers are becoming uh, online simulator drivers now because that seems to be something that you can do at home. So yeah I started ordering parts about a month ago. I'm gonna show you guys a build video of me like once I accumulated all the parts and I put piece this thing together and then yeah we'll talk about everything that's here how much it costs my overall thoughts that I feel like I got my my money's worth um, and how am I liking what I bought so far alright so let's go ahead and watch the build video and then we'll talk about um, all this stuff at the end Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed that. That was pretty cool building that thing. It was like a giant Lego set. So let's just go right into it and we'll talk about the parts list because I know there are a lot of people dying to know what the heck parts that I ordered and what I used. And then we'll also talk about how much it costs. Well, I'll just talk about how much it costs now so that you can kind of get an idea. I don't want you to click off the video, oh, that's too much money, but I just, you know, we're gonna go into it and I'll kind of break it down and why it costs so much. But at the end of the day, it's fairly expensive. So all up right here, I didn't have to pay for the audio stuff. I've got about eleven thousand dollars in this stuff. This is, uh, you know, it's probably five hundred to seven hundred dollars in shipping because these things are big, um, and a lot of things come from overseas. Actually, all of this stuff came from Europe pretty much, except for the Fanatec stuff, which originally came from Europe, but they shipped it from California. Um, but yeah, a lot of this stuff was expensive to ship just because of how heavy and large it is. 
So let's go right into it. I ended up having to build the PC and get all the monitors. So that is also factored into the equation. The PC alone is $2,000 and the monitors alone are $2,000. So if you take $4,000 off of it and you take this $1,000 seat, I mean, it's really not that much. You've got a couple components that you need to make a simulator like this work. Um, but yeah, I'll talk about how I learned about all of this stuff and why I did this uh, right now. So first of all, I've been wanting to build a sim for a long time, didn't really know where to start, and I was looking online a couple months ago and found this YouTube channel called um, Sim Racing Garage. There's a guy named Barry Roland on Sim Racing Garage, and he essentially does the most in-depth reviews on stuff about sim racing. It's ridiculous, like his shortest video is 45 minutes. It's crazy, he doesn't do this for money, he just does it because he enjoys talking about sim stuff. So he's essentially like as passionate about sim stuff as I am about drones, so I knew that we would get along. And in watching one of his videos, I saw they had a mini quad on the wall, so I ended up reaching out to him. And long story short, we're now good friends, and I ended up like trading him quads for consulting, and he helped me piece together this kit. So. Thank you, Barry. Um, and yeah, Sim Racing Garage is an amazing channel. If you haven't or never heard of it, go check it out. And the next thing would be the PC stuff. I know nothing about PCs. I am coming from a Mac world. I edit on a Mac. I have Final Cut Pro. That's what I learned on. I learned on iMovie and then moved to Final Cut. I've never really wanted to get into the PC world just because I don't love Adobe as far as the stuff that I've used, but maybe I'll learn to love it now that I'm kind of in bed with PC a little bit more. And how I learned about that, since I knew nothing about it, is a buddy of mine named Ruben Hattergy, a guy that I do a podcast with. So thank you, Ruben. Um, Sweep Wings, the guy, he makes big flying foam wings for FPV. Like that's how I know him through FPV and he helped me build the PC. So let's just go right into it now that you know a little bit about, you know, I knew nothing about this about a month and a half ago. I knew nothing about PCs. I knew nothing about sim racing. So now I have all of this up and running and I did it pretty much all by myself as far as putting it together. I had some, you know, kind of tech help over the phone with Barry as far as setting up some of these things. And then my father came over and helped me wire up the audio. But other than that, I essentially put all of this together myself. Um, and learned everything about it as much as I could through just watching YouTube videos. So, um, first of all, we'll dive into the PC. So I built this PC from scratch, and this parts list was put together by Ruben Hattergy. Um, he sent it to me. It's not necessarily the craziest, um, you know, he didn't, he did put it together for me, but there are other lists like this on YouTube. I'm just gonna go into it in detail, um, so I'll tell you exactly what I have. So within the PC, it's about two grand all up. As far as the case itself, it's a Fractal Meshify C ATX case. It's in black and it has a tempered glass thing so you can see all the RGB LEDs. Um, the motherboard is a uh, Asus Strix X570E, which is a really nice motherboard and is compatible with the newer line of AMD processors, which just came out a couple days ago, so I'm pretty happy about that. But as far as the processor that I have, it's an AMD Ryzen 9. 9 core, well, it's actually a 9, 3900X 12 core, 24 thread, which is a really nice processor. Um, as far as RAM, I've only got 16 gig of RAM because I don't necessarily need it right now. I'm not streaming or anything. So 16 gig works for what I'm doing. And I have Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro. Um, as far as power supply, I have a Be Quiet BNG, or no, BN6919. So 750 watt power supply, just kind of standard, whatever. Everyone likes Be Quiet because they're quiet. Um, yeah, that's the power supply. As far as uh, memory, I have a 500 gigabyte uh, drive that my OS is running on, which I'm running Windows 10, and then I have a terabyte stuff, which I, uh, these are all SSD, I have a terabyte SSD drive by Silicon Power um, that's running like where I put my games and whatnot. So all the game play, or all the games that I have, I put them on that drive so that they're not taking up space on the drive that's holding my OS. So anyways, all of that stuff, uh, I'll put a link in the description below for pretty much everything in this video. So if you're curious, you can find it down there. Um, next, we'll talk about the actual video card. So the video card is a Zotac Gaming GeForce RTX 2080 Super. So it's not the top, top tier of the line right now, but it's very close and it's pretty expensive. That's like a third of the price of this PC was a video card. So yeah, the video card's sick. It's got four display outs, well, one HDMI, three display outs. So I'm running three displays and we'll talk about the displays here because that's obviously the next thing in line since we're talking about them in the graphics card. So the next thing that we have, three 27 inch Asus 165 hertz refresh rate monitors. Um, these monitors 
are about $650 a piece, but I was able to get them for like 500 something on Amazon open box and they actually all work really well. So I'm kind of excited about that. So I've got $1,500 in those three monitors and then about $400 in this top monitor, which is a curved Asus monitor. Um, and it's not necessarily a highest refresh, refresh rate because it's, you know, HDMI plugged in. I think it's like a 60 or a 80 hertz or something like that. I don't know. It's, it's not 100 and 144. So as far as that's concerned, I've got two grand in the PC just in those parts alone that I listed. Again, $700 of that is graphics card. And then I've got almost $2,000 in monitors. And that's not even talking about the actual rig itself yet. This is just monitors and PC. We're already at $4,000. Um, so as far as the actual peripherals, I, like I started playing video games because I was waiting on stuff to come from Europe. And when I did that, I had to go find a PC mouse, like a gaming mouse and a gaming keyboard and a gaming headset and whatnot. So. I'll just talk about those now because somebody's going to ask. Um, I have a Razer 10 keyless Huntsman keyboard, which is an optomechanical switch keyboard, which I you know watched so many re YouTube reviews on these things, and I wanted a 10 keyless board because I didn't want something with a number pad on it that was going to stretch across the entire freaking desk. Um, and then I have a Death Adder 2, which is another, you know, these are both Razer products. And that's a Death Adder 2. That's the, uh, they're one of their gaming mice. So it just fits my hand. It's, hand, it's ergonomic, and I like that mouse a lot. Uh, I'll probably end up switching at some point. I tried a bunch of mice and tried a bunch of keyboards and those are the ones that I end up sticking with. The headset that I got, these are pretty pricey. This is a Steel Series um, Arctic Pro Wireless. They're like $350 shipped and whatnot with tax. I don't know if it's worth that much, but they're a really nice headset. The mic isn't that great because it is wireless, but hey, it works well. I may end up getting something else if I ended up streaming or something like that, but for now, those are working great for playing Call of Duty, which is the only first-person shooter that I'm currently playing, and then I'm also playing the simulator stuff. So now that we're talking about simulator stuff, let's just go ahead and get right into it. Um, I have a P1X, which is the cockpit. So the cockpit is where you put all these peripherals that you're gonna use, like your shifter and your steering wheel, so it holds everything tight. You don't wanna bolt stuff to the table. Um, you know, that's ultimately you'd have to have a very rigid table. If you have your pedals sliding all over the ground, that's not good. You want something that's a cockpit that you can put all this stuff on. These can be built, you know, but this was just like a turnkey package and it has everything that I needed and it's really not that expensive. So the SimLab P1X is the cockpit that I have and then I have the SimLab monitor stand as well. As far as the seat is concerned, Taxi Garage, I gotta thank those guys. A buddy of mine named Nick Ward that lives in Miami. He helped me out with this Sparco seat. This is a Pro 2000. This is an IF, uh, our FIA approved seat. I figured if I ended up changing seats in the future, it'd be way easier to sell a FIA approved seat because there's more people in motorsports than there are in uh, sim racing. So, you know, I got something that I can actually sell to someone that wants to go drifting or whatnot instead of a sim seat that I have to sell to a sim person because it's not FIA approved. So anyways, this is, thank you, Taxi Garage. Taxi Garage is a company that makes the crazy carts and they mod they don't make them razor makes the crazy carts but they modify them to be ridiculous you've probably seen some of the viral videos right now like real life mario kart a buddy of mine named nick ward that i went to high school with actually started that company taxi garage and yeah it's getting kind of popular now because people are at home and they want something to do and they can't drive their real cars so they want to drive these little carts and it's sick they're running like lipos in them and making them do crazy speeds and getting crazy tandem situations going on so Again, Taxi Garage, thank you, Nick, for everything. He helped me out with the seat and also the steering wheel. I ended up buying a Momo uh, Type 78, 350 mil suede steering wheel, which I'm going to use for drifting and whatnot. Uh, since we're talking about drifting, we'll talk about the handbrake. I have a handbrake, which is a Husingfeld handbrake, which is apparently the best, according to Barry. Um, at Sim Racing Garage. As far as the shifter is concerned, I pretty much went all out and brought the Pro Sim or I bought the Pro Sim H pattern that's uh, in a collaboration with Quaif. So this is literally the most badass shifter you can buy and I'll show you some B-roll shots of it because it's just out of control. <laughs> better than the Lotus shifter that I paid $2,000 for to put into a real car. Um, as far as the actual wheel base and wheel are concerned, they're Fanatec. I ended up buying a DD1 because I wanted, like Barry was telling me that I might end up getting a, I might end up switching later. So just get a DD1. DD1 and DD2 are essentially the same exact thing. Just one has more torque and I probably want not going to run the highest torque anyway. So the DD1 would be probably fine for me. So I ended up going with a DD1 wheelbase and then an R300 wheel, which is a wheel that has a podium hub and some paddle shifters and clutches and whatnot that comes from Fanatec just works really well with their setup. So that's the wheel and wheelbase that I have. As far as the pedals, I went with the all four sim cup 
or cup one. They're like Mecca cup ones, I think. So it's 16 pound stainless steel plate that these things mount to that comes with it. Then you got all laser cut pedals. So you got three pedals, you got a clutch brake and gas. They're all load cell base. So it's a super, super nice pedal set. They're about $800. Super nice pedal set, I can't complain. So as far as all of that is concerned, that's pretty much all the sim stuff. Now the audio, uh, I ended up getting just for my father, he had a bunch of 12 by nine monitors lying around. So these are like speaker monitors and I got four of those lined up around, kind of sitting around the outside of the rig. And then uh, I have a receiver over there and a big 12 inch subwoofer in the corner. So get some real vibey vibes when you're sitting in a car at idle and it's just vibrating the whole house because the thing's sitting there, you know, the subwoofer's blowing up. So yeah, that's sick and uh, overall, I'm extremely, extremely happy with this thing. I was unsure if spending $12,000 or $11,000 was going to be something that I regretted when I purchased all this stuff because obviously I bought it all, spent all that money and then waited like a month and a half for it all to come in and then spent like a week building it and then got it together and, and yeah, it essentially exceeded everything that I thought it was going to, which is crazy because I didn't expect it to exceed and the only thing I can really do next is either upgrade upgrade my wheelbase and get motion. Those are kind of the only things that really have left to do because I've kind of topped out everything else that you can do. Um, I want to show you guys this before we go because I thought this was kind of cool. Um, so I need to play first person shooters but I also need to be able to run this triple screen setup. And what I ended up doing is I put this left screen right here on a swivel so that I can swivel it over to this desk and end up playing on it. So let me do that for you. So I can swivel this screen over and then take my keyboard here, swivel that out of the way, and then I can play first person shooters like that. I don't know, I thought that was kind of cool. But yeah, this is the setup. If you got any questions, put them in the comments below. If you want to see me like streaming on this thing, that would be dope. I think I'm probably going to do that. I'm playing Call of Duty all the time and uh, enjoying the whole online experience again. I haven't played video games since I was like 16, 17 years old when I used to play MLG Halo and Call of Duty. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. Thank you for watching. I'm sorry.